Um, folks, thank you so much for being here. Who is excited about snow this morning? Some of you? All right, I hope you guys are dry and warm. Looks like so. So my name is Lin Sung. I I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Looks like I'm stuck in here. <laughs> so my name is Lin Sang. Uh, I work at a small company called Solo.io, and I'm the head of open source at uh, Solo.io. And I've been working at this company for almost four years. And before I joined Solo, I worked at IBM for 19 years. Uh, so who have worked at IBM here? I know there's a lot of people from IBM, sometimes maybe not. All right, I guess not so much on the cloud native journey. All right, unfortunately, my co-speaker, Aristine, she couldn't be here. She had a family emergency. So I'm going to talk to you all about the entire talk. So uh, let's get started. I actually just started learning AI recently myself, so I'm going to share with you uh, what I learned and also how am I trying to get some AI, Gen AI application running and uh, how am I using Istio to work with my generative AI. So I'm sharing with you kind of a journey what I learned. Um, so interesting enough, the history of AI is probably not too surprising. We've been having the concept of AI for for a very long time, starting with 1950. Um, but what's really interesting is uh, since ChatGPT, how many of you start to become excited about AI because of ChatGPT? Raise your hand. All right, I didn't expect a lot of you too. So yeah, that's really when I started to pay attention to um, AI because for the longest time, I feel like AI is not real, right? It's like so far away from us. But once ChatGPT arrived, I'm like, geez, this thing is so intelligent. You know, sometimes you talk to ChatGPT more than uh, maybe your friend because ChatGPT never gets angry at you. Um, so um, I'm going to ask you all, how many of you think uh, any of these pictures are generated by AI? Raise your hand if you think uh, all of the pictures are generated by AI. A few of you. And how many of you think at least one of the pictures are generated by AI? All right. Great hands, thank you. The answer is all the pictures are actually generated by AI. So the first picture was in 2018. You can see it's not as good. And the 2023 one, the next two picture, you can see it's like really, really like animated, like a real um, thing. Um, so that means the AI is being involved in tremendously from the facial expression from the person in the painting just in less than five years. Um, in terms of AI, there are three key components. It's really about algorithm, data, and computing power. So think about the algorithm as the brain of the AI, and the data is what actually fuel drive the AI, because the data is like the new oil for the AI. Without the data, you can't really have in your AI having any brain. It's like when you lost your mind, there's nothing you can think about, right? So you need that data to be able to processing, to be able to reasoning. And computing power, which is where we care about, is the machine that behind the AI that can power the AI as application running, hopefully in Kubernetes, in cloud native. Um, as far as AI, it's important to be able to train that data, right? Because the raw data doesn't mean anything. There are three key ways to do the training. One is supervised training, which is comparing the AI-generated outcomes and predictions to the correct answer, and then tell the AI, hey, you did it right. Oh, you didn't get it right. So using that uh, supervised, which is why it's called supervised AI training, uh, to teach AI. And the other way is unsupervised learning, where you find the patterns in the AI, finds the patterns in the data, and the, use that to be able to learn. And the third one is reinforced uh, learning, which is based on trial and error. Um, what's about influence? How many of you know what inference is? 
A little bit, maybe, yeah. I started to learn this. I think a simple way to understand is through the training uh, techniques we just mentioned. Uh, the machine is trained what is a person, what is a strawberry, what is a bicycle. As the machine learned what bicycle is, um, in this case, uh, it's an orange bicycle. And next time when the machine sees a green bicycle, it can be able to figure out, okay, it looks pretty much the same as the orange bicycle, so I think it's a bicycle. So that's what inference is. Uh, the other thing important is retrieval augmented generation, which is called a RAG. Uh, what's interesting about RAG is when you talk to ChatGPT, for instance, or another large language model, the answer may not be exactly what you like because they don't necessarily have the specific domain knowledge. This is where RIG can come in to help. To, you can use RIG to refine that data and retrieve the relevant text. All right, let's jump into a demo. Um, so for this demo, I'm going to ask you all to pay attention because if you're on your screen, I will not get enough bandwidth. So finger crossed, we will be able to show a live demo. Um, so for this demo, we're going to use a couple of things. So first, um, the application is Python. So we're going to show an AI application with Gen AI, and we're going to use Streamlight, uh, which allows allows me to easily uh, running the website for the generative AI. We're going to use a Llama, which is a large language um, model provider. And we're going to also use OpenAI. We're going to use Kubernetes, uh, K9S. We're going to use Istio. We're going to use Permises, Kayali, Spiffy, and Kubernetes Gateway API. All right, let's jump into the demo. And a finger crossed, uh, because I know the conference Wi-Fi is not great. Um, so I did preload my cluster. Um, so in my cluster, I have Istio Ambien installed. You guys heard a lot about Ambient uh, for the speakers before me. So you can see in my cluster, by the way, I'm running one node cluster. The reason is because the Wi-Fi, because I had to preload the images onto my Kubernetes cluster, and if I have three node cluster, it had to uh, load onto each of the node, which uses a lot of my disk. Um, but this works on multi-node, which is what I did last week. I only changed to one node because of the conference Wi-Fi situation. Um, so I have Istio installed. I have Istio CNI installed, which is the component that uh, when the pods are in ambient, Istio CNI captures all the incoming and outgoing traffic and send it to Zero Trust Tunnel, which you heard earlier. And uh, so that Zero Trust Tunnel can process uh, the, the traffic by enhance the traffic with mutual TLS, provide layer for observability. I also have the Istio control plane installed. Um, I have a little bit of observability tool installed, which is Kayali. Uh, how many of you know what Kayali is? It's essentially the dashboard for Istio. Great job, guys. Uh, permissives, who are running permissives in your environment? All right, you guys are doing great. And I also have Z-Tunnel running on my cluster. And uh, I have um, a client, a simple client. I have a demo application, which I wrote uh, in Python. I can go over really quickly with you, surely. I also have a Llama running in my Kubernetes cluster, running in the Llama namespace. So that's the AI stuff I'm going to use, uh, the large language model. Um, so the first thing first, uh, I want to show you um, if this command works is, so basically what I want to do is, I want to show you from the client application, I'm going to copy it to here, because um, I'm not ready to run a loop yet. So I want to show you, um, I'm calling a llama and ask a llama, hey, what are the large language model I'm already loaded on my machine? So you can see I have a lava model uh, loaded on my machine, which can take a picture and process that picture and analyze it using generative AI. I also have a llama, uh, llama 
Android 3.2, which is one of the newer model uh, provided by Alama, allow you to chat uh, with, uh, with Nama, uh, which we will show shortly. And um, let's uh, get started. So the first thing is I am going to uh, enroll my application in Ambient. So as you can see in the default namespace, I have the client and my demo application. And uh, if I do a namespace, you can see I'm not uh, in Ambient yet. Uh, if you can see right now, I'm labeled with the default. Um, so the first thing, let's go ahead and uh, so we're going to do, do you guys know how to label a namespace with Ambient? Label namespace default, I think, istio.io, that data play mode slash ambient. You know, sometimes when you're on stage, you can't even remember a simple command. Did I get that right? Label namespace default. All right. All right, I did it. So let's label the namespace on ambient. And uh, hopefully, when I go to this guy here, OK, so I have that labeled. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my alama also in ambient, uh, which, I, by the way, I already did um, before the demo. So you can see it's also already in ambient. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to uh, do a port forwarding, which I already did um, before I get on stage, to port forward my demo application. So let's go to my demo application. Uh, all right. So it's local host. Uh, all right. So this is the demo application. So the first thing I want to ask, remember we loaded two large language model. One is Llama 3.2. So I'm going to ask a question. So um, I'm going to ask, what are the cool places to go for Salt Lake City? What are the cool places to go in Salt Lake City? All right. So have you guys done any fun activity yesterday? Because yesterday was super nice. Yes? Yeah? Awesome. Yeah, I went to the Capitol uh, Hill building. It was so pretty. You can see most of the Salt Lake City. Um, by the way, you can see the application is running. It's running. It's making a call from my demo application to Alama. And uh, hopefully, we'll get a response soon. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to see if there's any metrics. Um, sometimes um, the metrics will take a little bit of time to get it. So I'm going to change the window of the metrics to be the past five minutes because I run this while I was sitting there before, so I just want to get the most recent data. So you can see I'm getting some, actually getting some metrics, right, in the last five minutes. Um, so I'm getting a matrix from the client talking to a llama, right? Because I, uh, from the client, uh, I ask a llama, what are the large language models that have been, um, that have been loaded on, on a llama? So, and you can see it's mutual TLS. Remember that API call I did from cur command, right? So that's secured by mutual TLS. And uh, what else did I do? So we also have, so this is also the client. Um, so we also have um, a demo application, which I'm hopefully would show up here. Um, so let me actually make sure it doesn't show the history data. Okay, so Istio. Uh, TCP, by the way, these are the TCP metrics generated by Zero Trust Tunnel. So you can see received um, bytes and uh, everything. So when you see this, um, by the way, I'm also seeing some waypoint data. That's because I think the Alama is running with waypoint. I need to double check on that. Um, okay, so this is from the demo application, which is the application that we interfa uh, interface and uh, with the chat, and it's going to destination principle with Alama, and it's be able to present uh, mutual TLS security policy, and uh, let's see our chat response come back. 
No, wow, there's uh, so many cool things you can do in Salt Lake City. All right, Temple Square, uh, all right, the Greenway, the garden, the public library. That's awesome. All right, let's go back to Kayali and see if we can see something. Let me change to last five minutes. Um, let me de um, generate some, let me make sure. I'm not sure why the graph is not generated, but um, I did have some graph generated early on, so you can see this is what the graph looks like uh, when the graph is working. Um, so when the graph is working, basically you can see the client is calling a llama, and then you can see it's calling using the client principle, which is powered by Spiffy ID. And a llama also has this principle. Um, and you can see the TCP metrics all here too. So that's pretty nice. Um, all right, so that's the first demo. Uh, let me show you a second demo, uh, which is using another different large language model. So some of you know that we actually just uh, published a new Istio book about how many of you have children? Uh, all right, some of you. And how many of you have kids read the guided, uh, uh, illustrated guided book for Kubernetes? No, some of you. All right. So we just published this book called "Iz Saves the." birthday, which is Q, Captain Cube's 10th birthday. So what I'm asking uh, the, in the application, what I'm doing is I'm going to ask Anama, hey, can you analyze this picture for me? And as you analyze the picture, can you also uh, tell me if the picture is generated by AI? So let's take a look at Oh, actually, the response is the spawning. So, but um, let me show you how I actually code this because I haven't had a chance to show you. So basically, I have a couple of Python applications right here. And the one we, had, uh, we just look at is chat with Nama, which I send an API call to Nama 3.2 with the Llama URL, which is the Llama running on my cluster, or Llama running on my cluster. And right now, what we are running is uh, we're running on this uh, specific message. We're asking Nava, which is the large language model uh, we loaded into a Llama, to say, can you describe the picture and analyze if it's generated? generated by AI. And then let's go back. It actually was able to say this image uh, is a birthday taking place on a boat. So that did a good job. Unfortunately, it didn't recognize Easy, which is the new uh, Phoebe and Friends character for Istio, uh, which is this guy, by the way, the dolphin. Um, so, Unfortunately, it said ZZ saves the birthday, so that's not quite right. Uh, by the way, this is actually um, rig would come in, right? So if you can develop a, uh, a rig a microservice and be able to train the module to say, look, what exactly is easy? What exactly is Istio? So it can be a lot more smart. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to develop that. Um, with my co-speaker uh, gone just before the last week, so we didn't finish that portion. Um, I can see, uh, one thing interesting is, it does say an Istio story, so uh, suggesting it might be an AI story um, system named Istio. Uh, now it's trying to analyze if the image is generated by Istio, uh, by AI, so we'll see what it says. Uh, all right, it does say it's very attention to detail. By the way, do you guys think this image is generated by AI? How many of you think it's generated by AI? Raise your hand. All right, a few of you. All right, let's see what... Um, the, the machine learning uh, from our llama says, all right. Um, it does, interesting enough, it actually was able to tell a lot of details uh, in just the 
cover of the book, like the consistency in style, the imagination and the originality, uh, the attention and the, the emotion of the characters. That's pretty cool. So um, it's also be able to tell it's aimed at very young audience, suggesting AI could be designed to understand and apply emotional story elements. Wow, just tell me if it's generated by AI. <laughs> All right, storytelling. Oh my gosh, six, okay. <laughs> It's funny, though, because if I ask you whether it's generated by AI, you may not be able to come up with six reasoning, right, before you actually say whether it's generated by AI or not. So it's kind of interesting that uh, it actually able, I think it able to analyze probably more than what I can see from the picture. How many of you would agree that AI actually was able to analyze more than what you would uh, see in the picture? Because the attention to detail it's kind of impressive, right? Um, all right, number seven. Okay, in conclusion, finally, all right. Okay, what did it say? The visual elements presented in the image and their combination. It's reasonable to assume that image is indeed generated by AI, specifically one with advanced capability in storytelling, drawing, and emotional representation. I am sorry, but you are wrong. <laughs> so we did have a professional uh, a story person actually did this image for us. So uh, this is wrong, even though you come up with seven reasoning, but it's wrong. All right, the next demo, let's jump into the next demo. This should be a fun one. So I'm going to connect a demo application to my phone, and we're going to see if this works. Okay, I'm going to allow that, and hopefully I'll receive a notification. All right, we can take a picture now. What's your mood now? So what I'm going to do is ask the large language model to analyze the mood in the audience and uh, be able to see if there's anything abnormal in the picture. So, <laughs> so um, show me your mood. Are you guys happy? Do you guys want to show happy? Happy or sad? Are you guys having fun? All right, if you're happy, show your happy face. Because what I'm going to do is holding my phone here, and I'm going to take a picture. All right, let's do it. So um, once the picture is taken, it's going to send to a llama, which is running on my laptop, running in my Kubernetes cluster. And uh, let me show you code where the picture is analyzed. So what we're doing is analyze the mood and, uh, and anything unusual. So basically, it's uh, specified this is the Lava model we're going to use, and uh, we're going to stream the response back so we can get the response faster. And uh, we're going to load up the image and uh, ask. Let's see if we get the image back. Okay, it's still running. So now I'm going back to my Kayali and finger crossed so we're going to get more data this time. All right, so we did get more data. So notice here, I'm not relying on my past data now. So last 10 minutes, you guys know I'm here talking. There's no way I would fade this, right? So I'm actually, we can visualize the traffic, which is pretty nice, right? And uh, we can we can do TCP traffic, um, all the metrics, all the stuff I showed you, it did, it did appear in the last 10 minutes which is awesome. All right, let's go back to our application. All right, let's see if this is accurate. This image depicts an indoor conference hall filled with attendees at what appears to be a tech-related event, possibly a keynote or panel discussion during a conference or workshop. The crowd is seated on multiple rows facing towards the front, uh, while there are speakers or presenters. The attendee seems engaged and looking in the direction of the speaker or, or presentation. Great job. Job, guys. All right, the mood appears to be one of the focus and interest as people paying attention to the event taking place. There is a vis visible stage set up with lighting rig 
Indicating the event will invoke multimedia presentation or live preference or performance, which is so accurate. All right. So you guys are dressed up in casual and business attire. Suggest a diverse crowd from tech industry. All right. Um, anything unusual? There doesn't appear to be anything immediately out of place or out of context. All right. It seems to be a typical thing. The lighting suggests indoor. There's no strong indication of any specific culture or geography context. All right. I think it did a good job. What do you think? Yeah? All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you guys for being so engaging. All right. I think, do I still have more time? Maybe a little bit more time. All right, the last demo I want to show really quick is about open AI. So hopefully, um, so what I'm doing now, by the way, this is what we ask, uh, what are the cool places to go in Salt Lake City? Ask a llama. So we're going to, we're going to ask open AI, see uh, if open AI thinks differently. All right, so hopefully this is going to be running on my machine. Uh, the way I have it works, uh, just really quickly, is I don't have any egress control right now. So um, I, I'm using ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo large language model, and I'm not running open, open AI locally, so I'm using an open AI. Um, open AI API key, which I loaded as a secret, and I loaded as an environment variable into my Kubernetes pod. And um, we are just entered a prompt, and then we're going to ask Open AI, you know, uh, about the question. And if it couldn't connect, it would tell me, you know, there's a connector error. So it's really simple, and boom. It's, it's fast, all right. So uh, let me make sure this is actually from OpenAI. Okay, so these are from OpenAI. So Temple Square, uh, Zoo, it's pretty much the same, I guess. It didn't mention the library. Oh, the Great Salt Lake, which I love. Okay, so it's more concise, which is pretty nice. Um, the last demo I want to show is apply egress traffic, if I have time. So what I'm going to do is right now, I want to control the traffic come to um, open, uh, open AI to the external service. So I do have Istio egress, um, and I have a waypoint, use waypoint labeled. Um, I'm going to go to my pod, and uh, I'm going to go to the egress. Okay, I do have waypoints. So to apply control to external traffic, you need to apply a waypoint proxy to control that egress traffic. So one thing I haven't done is um, I need to label the Istio egress uh, with ambient. So let me do that. Um, so uh, Istio egress. So basically that means uh, I'm labeling uh, the egress to be part of ambient so I can apply traffic control. So um, the policy we're going to apply is we're going to apply a service entry. How many of you are familiar with service entry in Istio? Raise your hand. All right, many of you. So let's review the service entry YAML really quickly. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to say, you know, we're going to allow service entry um, external traffic to open AI. So I'm going to apply that, which I imagine, and it's applying to the Istio egress uh, namespace. So once it's applying, it will allow me to continue to talk to open AI. However, if I'm going to talk to other uh, services, it may not be allowed because only the register traffic are going. Uh, so this should continue work. So I'm going to ask what are the cool places to eat. Hopefully it would continue work in Salt Lake City. All right, um, but this is not the cool portion I want to show you, but I want to show you this actually worked. Okay, so it recommends a bunch of uh, places to eat. Very cool, I, which I haven't been to any of these places. Hopefully I'll be able to. Uh, some are really close by, I think. All right, um, so the next thing I want to do is I want to apply authorization policy. So if you remember, when we make a call to OpenAI, it's a get call. 
Um, so I'm going to apply this quickly, and this authorization policy say I'm not going to allow you to do get call. You can only do post call. So um, so for any traffic goes through the egress. So let's go ahead and apply this authorization policy because right now it's only allowed post unless you are a client uh, from the default namespace, which we are not the client, we are the demo application. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call. Uh, uh, this thing really quick, and uh, hopefully it works. Um, and uh, if it works, all right, it did work. Okay, the API server couldn't reach. So that means I was able to apply egress uh, to my generative AI application. I was able to uh, apply authorization policy. Uh, let's do a quick recap on the demo. Uh, we were able to enroll into ambient, right? We were able to gain layer four metrics. We were able to add, um, uh, deploy waypoint and apply egress control. Um, we were able to run generative AI application in ambient without any code change. We were able to run large language model, everything is running on my laptop. All right. Um, any questions? Do I have time for questions, actually, Keith? No? Yes? One minute? No? OK. Um, so I will be around. Um, by the way, I mentioned about the Easy Saves the Birthday. I'm also an author of Psychalis is Still Explained, uh, which I try to explain ambient to you. So um, stop by our booth uh, to get it. Oh, I have a few copies if you ask a really fancy question. So tell me if you enjoy or any feedback for my talk. I may give you one of my book. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, by the way, this is the feedback QR code. I'm supposed to share it with you. So if you like my talk, or if you don't like my talk, I want you to be honest with me. If you don't like my talk, or if you think there's anything, anything I can do better, do let me know. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of Easter Day and KubeCon. <laughs>